He's a cool no, Oh my oh gosh! My Look at this. It's turned around. What just oh happened? My words. Wow. Okay, there are comebacks in chess, and then there's this. This is some absolute sorcery, witchcraft. The greatest turnaround of a game I've seen this entire year of 2023. Now let's set the scene here. So with white, we've got Dennis Lazovic, a guy playing out of his skin right now. He's in this losers final of this Julius Bear Generation Cup. His opponent is Ali Reza Firuzja, the one and only young prodigy, and the winner of this plays Magnus Carlsen tomorrow in the grand final. Now the first game was a draw, Ali Reza had white, so we go into this one. If one of them wins, they take the match, they go through to the final. This game has it all, plus an insanely cool end game, very rarely seen. Let's check it out. So d4 played by Lazovic, we get d5 from Ali Reza, a Slav defence, now I'll keep this moving, 100 moves right, we've got to get through these ones. The Knights develop, and now Bishop f5, and after Ali Reza sets up the rock solid pawn structure, White goes after the Bishop. This is all theory, Black jumps in here, provokes this pawn move, then drops back, and then white chops soon on g6 when there's this threat of the battery. And we go down this position now where queen c2 is played, preparing to actually castle queenside. And partly to do with the fact that f3 was provoked. You know, how safe is the king over on the king side? And Ali Reza, he goes a5, thinking, okay, I know where you're planning to go. So we get h4 now played, not forced. Castles queenside more common. And now Ali Reza decides to take on c4, lets the bishop develop in one go, but clears this d5 square for his knight, opens the queen and bishop battery. Now castle's queen side was played, ignoring this pawn, which wasn't taken. If you snatch it, well you're wasting time, which you don't really have. You know, you want to be attacking the white king, sorting your own king, and after rook h1, we see some problems. G3 is coming, then the rook down here, so you have to start doing stuff like king d7, ugly. So the pawn not touched. A4 from Ali Reza, he keeps attacking, good move. A3, this is the most desirable pawn structure for white. Keeps an eye on this square, and now you can go b5 immediately. Computer's top move looks like white's about to get blown off the board, but you can take here, and now however black recaptures, you can drop back with the knight. I'm going to say, however, black recaptures, if they go with the c-pawn, the b-pawn would have been weak. But if they go with this pawn, now you can go knight a2, you're blockading the dark squares, and you know, white's doing okay. So coming back here, Ali Reza decided not to go for b5, is the engine's top move though, he develops the knight to d7, but now e4, and he gets a horrendous position. Now the top move is to take here, which is pretty logical, because after you backpedal, look how cramped these pieces are now getting. Look at this mighty white centre. Look at the bishop pair, the safer king. This spells trouble for Ali Reza. Look at the position that Dennis now gets. So he drops back his bishop, preempting b5, which Ali Reza plays, but look at this for a response, so thematic, d5. Let's blow open the board with the king in the center, very common idea. Now sometimes you do this at the cost of a pawn. Here, white isn't even sacking a pawn, material is level, look at these bishops, now it looks like you're skewering the queen to the king, but bishop c3, rock solid. B4 is going nowhere, you know, this leads to nothing, your own king's getting attacked, and then you get this check here, blah, blah, blah. So actually, black has to take care of king's safety, and now white is just lasering across the board. That bishop pair, the rooks, everything, this is horrible. If you castle king's side, we'll look at the attack that's coming down there. So Ali Reza goes queen c7, we get rook h e1, pressuring that bishop. Now knight f6, again, you know, the pawn not touched, there's no time for that. We see queen e2, pressuring that bishop, and after king f8, king b1, both players doing some king safety, Ali Reza now plays a move, and look at his reaction. You know, a lot of people don't get British. Oh humor. my gosh! Under 50 seconds, he plays a move, he immediately reacts, and as does the bar. 
So the rook taking here is leading to trouble. What should Ali Reza have done? Well, takes on d5 was the one. Because after rook recaptures, now you can take with the bishop. I mean, it looks scary to do so. But if white does this, you're just in time with king g8 to cover your rook. So the best move for white is this. And okay, the game goes on. King g8 still good to step off this diagonal and everything. But at least you've moved this bishop off e7 where it's being targeted by this battery of queen and rook. That's really key. Because after Ali Reza takes here, there's big problems for black. So one devastating move that Dennis missed was bishop to a5. Really cool tactic overloading the queen. Because if captures... Queen takes here, this is the point. King goes and look at how you're crashing through. It's just game over, right? So this is why after bishop a5, the queen would have to go somewhere else. If you go here, there's more devastating tactics. You know, takes, check, then the rook drops in just a moment. And if you go, say, here, well, again, you're stepping into the rook. There's still bishop takes here. Really awful. So that was just a killer. But bishop a5 missed. This one was played, not allowing Ali Reza to take. Still a great move though. Dennis is up on the clock and Ali Reza just chucks a pawn, desperate for counterplay. We see captures and queen b7 pressuring the pawn, trying to win it back. And Dennis goes rook h1. His idea being after captures, rook captures, well now he's got some nasty stuff starting down here. And it spooks Ali Reza enough to not take this pawn, to do some defensive measures, and that is the best move. And now we see b5. Dennis still well in control. Queen b6 played. Ali Reza is on seconds at this point. You know, four seconds on the clock. They get three seconds increment, meaning he made that move with a second on the clock. And this is where the sorcery begins. So we get queen a5, um, e5, you know, threatening mate. Look at that. So now rook takes on c3 by Ali Reza. He's on seconds, you know, get rid of the bishop, sack the exchange. But now Dennis is an exchanger and the better position, but Ali Reza chops this pawn, but he's only winning it back. Oh no, he's one pawn up here, sorry. We get queen c8 check, but it forces off the queens. How are you ever gonna hold on in this end game? The knight attacked, the king comes over to defend. And now bishop c4, important move, because after a3, you wanna go b3, Keep those pawns on the board, increase winning chances, but not block out your bishop on a2. So g5 now from Ali Reza. King a2, all of this done on seconds. Bishop b4 played. Rook h5 attacking the pawn. The bishop drops back. King b1 now and knight h6. Can Ali Reza unravel? You know, maybe he's jumping here. So bishop d3 played. We get king g8. Rook h1 back. And now g4 from Ali Reza, and he provokes Dennis into a compromised pawn structure. The computer wants king a2 here. Leave the pawns on some light squares. But f4 is now played. Now in of, of itself, you know, the computer doesn't mind that one so much. But after bishop d6, g3, ouch, there goes the eval bar. Does not like these pawns on dark squares because they could become targets. We get king f8, rook e1, knight g8 now played, bishop f5, all of this on such low time. The pawn is hit, the knight defends, rook e3 played, and now g6 kicks the bishop and bishop c5. Now there's still pressure here, so the knight can't move right now. The rook is attacked, but watch this. Rook d3, bishop b4, the rook attacks, bishop c5, rook c4, and Ali Reza goes for this pawn. How are you defending it? Well, white now goes rook c3, but knight e4. Are you actually kidding me? You develop the knight into the game, hitting the rook, defending the bishop, hitting this pawn, and so there's no time for white to take here, and now f5 is coming. And this, after rook d3, is where we get the reaction of the commentary team. They can't believe what they're seeing. He's a cool no, Oh my gosh! Oh my God. Look at this. It's turned around. What just oh happened? My words. Wow. So we now have this position, just a devastating turnaround for white. Now we get knight takes on g3, the pawn is dropping. Bishop b7 played, coming onto the long diagonal. Knight back to e4, taking's no good. The pawn is running through, you know, either one of these is just too much to deal with. 
So coming back here, we see rook taking, trying to run the b pawn. G3 now played, and you've got to give up your rook. Rook a6 prepares to take here, come behind, the king covers, and now king c2 clearing the a-file um, and the first rank for the rook. G2, rook a1, queen, that is the rook gone. Are you kidding me? King d3. Here comes Ali Reza with the knight. All of this on seconds, but he's building increment. And now this is just some technique in terms of how he rounds up the pawn here, but can he win this rare end game which we're gonna reach? Now why is Dennis shuffling by the way? He wants to stay with this one. Because if he goes round for these, well then the bishop can always take this one. So we see the shuffle of the king. The B pawn eventually drops. We reach this position here. Ali Reza's got the extra pawn, but look at this. The bishop is about to give itself up. This is the position we now reach where we have a knight and a bishop against a lone king. Can Ali Reza execute on this checkmate? We'll check out this final clip. I'm gonna play the video out with. You can see what happened for yourself. Now it's played on 1.5 speed. So if you're watching this on two times speed, you're about to get like three times speed. You're gonna enter a new YouTube parallel universe, right? Where YouTube has three times speed. So enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out this awesome finish and thanks very much for watching. There we go, we're gonna get it. Okay. It's on the board. <laughs> this is, oh, I'm really happy to see this. But now the king is already tied up, but it's, on the, it's in the wrong corner. Yeah, but the trick is all players study this from the wrong corner. So you know how to do it from the white uh, king being in the light square corner. Eventually, white king has to be pushed into either a1 or h8, a dark square corner so the black bishop can trap it. Um, so this is where it's going to begin. Here we go. Um, Well-known technique now. Yeah, and here is the thing. If the bishop, oh, okay. This yeah, is the I'm position. Sure. And w. now the knight will do a w. Yeah. <laughs> this is the whole key. The knight does not move from doing this w. Yeah. Seems like he knows how to do it. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and then this one is uh, the box. <laughs> there they go. There, there's the box. Yeah. Remember these positions. And it's funny because when you first look at this, uh, it's very unnatural the way you win it because uh, uh, you, you move your pieces away from the king but look at how that knight is magically trapping the king yeah. the way to do it you have to put your opponent's king it. in the same corner as the bishop and he's and done it and he's done it in about 11 seconds we did see some increment but it looks like he knows exactly and that is it unbelievable unbelievable, unbelievable chess here